Batwing number eight, written by Judd Winnick, art by Dustin Nguyen. We left off last issue with Nightwing and Robin coming across Massacre in a warehouse, and he had seemingly taken over one of the Steelback armors from the Kingdom's hero, Steelback. This issue picks up with basically the middle of the fight scene. Nightwing, Robin, ducking around, trying to dodge all the bullets and the swords and machetes and whatnot. And Massacre's just like, hey... You're not going to be able to last forever. My Either Steelback's going to shoot you or I'm going to slice you. Something's, and, I mean, me and you are on the same side. We're both punishing criminals. Aren't we? Shouldn't we be working together? And Nightwing's like, okay, yeah, but like the punishment thing is kind of where we disagree. Also, I don't have to dodge around forever because we got multiple Batman incoming. And then comes in Batman and Batwing. So immediately Robin, Nightwing, and uh, Batman all converge on the steel back armor because massacre and batwing got some personal stuff to take care of so batwing just swooshes in grabs massacre and continues through the wall of the warehouse just taking them outside so that everyone else can focus on the armor and they're on the phone with um the original steel back daniel balogun who is telling him, all right, I'll tell you guys where the weaknesses are and how to take this thing out so you can get to whoever's inside because it is still, it's just armor. There is still a person inside. So then we see over with Batwing and Massacre and they start fighting and basically Batwing just immediately is like, no, no, I'm not, this is enough. This is it. We're done. We're not doing this anymore. Whatever, whatever you want to do here is not happening. So he fires off like some clamps that get Massacre stuck to the wall. And he's like, I know who you are. I know exactly who you are. And I, I, I hate you with everything I am for everything that you've done. I know that you're General Keita, the warlord, who I thought I had left to the dogs. And Massacre's like, Keita, are you serious? That piece of crap? You think I'm him? No. No, how dare you lump me in with him? And he just pulls off the grapple and punches Batwing in the face. Cut over to the Steelback fight, and Nightwing's just throwing small explosives to distract uh, the Steelback armor so that Robin can get in underneath and take out the legs. And then meanwhile, Batman gets on top and shoves a Batarang into an external shutdown switch, which I guess is the equivalent of putting a paperclip into your phone. Uh, and so he, he shuts down the armor, it opens up, and there is nobody inside. So, as it turns out, it was being piloted remotely. So, as they're doing this, there's a loud, like, right, like a robotic noise, I guess you want to call it. Just It's a, it's an explosion. It's a self-destruct timer. That's what it is. And Steelpack's like, alright, you guys gotta get out of there. It's gonna explode. So then we cut back over to Massacre and Batwing, and... Basically, Massacre's like, how dare you love me with him? He's like, fine, whatever, you're not him. Regardless, you are still someone exactly like him who does terrible things in the name of quote-unquote order or whatever. There's no more blood on my hands here. And he kicks uh, Massacre hard enough to knock off his little skull mask. And underneath it, he sees just a guy. Like, I don't recognize him, but Batwing very quickly does because um, it's his brother. It's Isaac. No points if you got that. That was that was it was literally down to two people, and Isaac was the only one left. So, apparently, Isaac says something like, "Oh, the Redeemer. He helped show me the truth, everything I needed to know." And Batwing's like, "What? The Redeemer? Hold on, Isaac. What the hell?" And he, immediately, Isaac's like, "How do you know my name? What's going on here?" And Batwing's like, "All right, look. Let me help you." I'm not going to hurt you anymore. Just let me help you get out of this. And he's like, I, I don't know. You know my real name. Something, this is not in the, this is not according to plan. Um, he gets called from Batman saying that they got to evac because the whole thing's going to explode. So he stretches out his hand to grab for Isaac. And before Isaac takes his hand, he's like, tell me, who are you? And Batwing's like, it's me. I'm Dave. And then explosion. Uh, elsewhere, soon afterwards, phone calls being made by a shadowy man to massacre saying hey i lost contact with you after i self-destructed steel back remotely i'm going to the rendezvous point i hope to see you there but then uh batwing busts in and was just like we traced your signal we know it's you we know you're the guy who's piloting this we know that you're redeemer uh, it was you josiah cone aka the tech guy for the kingdom again no points if you guess that one and 
basically they just go through his motivation of like, oh, he did it because they let so many innocent people die or so many children die. They got in bed with that warlord for the sake of quote unquote order, like blah, blah, blah. They all deserve to die. And he basically tells him how Isaac was living in the jungle. He was like half crazy and he's the one who like brought him back to his sanity and gave him focus and purpose. So Isaac didn't die at the hands of the warlord back in the day. So basically Josiah's like, all right, well, fine. Am I, th you're going to kill me? Then kill me. Go ahead. I will, I will gladly accept it because I, I will die a noble cause. And Batman comes in and he's like, no, no one else is going to die. Notably, Batwing doesn't say that though. Batman says that. So let me get a little epilogue here where Batwing is talking to Batman and, you know, they've got Josiah Cohen. He's probably going to be extradited to the Congo for his crimes. Massacre, a.k.a. Isaac, disappeared without a trace. They're not sure where he is. And Batwing's like, I'm going to find him and I'm going to rescue him. Not capture him, rescue him. And they just have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk about, like, how they can come from such terrible, terrible past. Like, he was a child soldier how could they ever come back and do something that's truly good? And they're like, it's because we came from such troubled past that we are able to do good. And that's where it leads off, except for two pages here, where it just shows a flashback of David and Isaac in the jungle. They're looking out for people. Um, they literally have guns on them. And Isaac is asking David stories about their parents that he can't remember because they died so young. And they're just reminiscing and telling a story about how uh, David had the hiccups and his father was making fun of him for it and they were laughing together and David tells Isaac look I miss him too but I will always be here always brother and that's it uh, I like it it's solid I think that it felt kind of rushed in terms of like oh, okay we're just having the reveal the part where they disappear the guy who was actually in charge of it all and all that stuff, all of that was all just in one issue, and it was just wrapped up very quickly. Like, when it said we're going to the States, I thought we had at least another, like, five issues of going, like, just dealing with that. But it's like, no, no, we're done now. We're done. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that the next issue is a tie-in to the Night of the Owls event, possible. I don't know. Overall, though, I think it's, like, a 6.5 um again it is the dustin win on art uh wasn't quite as good as the last artist i believe ben oliver um but it does have its own style and i do like the way it looks a lot of the time so it's good but yeah it just feels really rushed and i feel like they were like oh okay well we got to wrap this up before we get into the night of the owls thing so yeah unfortunately didn't quite have the breathing room i would have hoped but still not bad overall mm -hmm.